Okay, this afternoon we're out with Jess. We're on an open bridleway here and we're just having an off lead walk. Come on, Jess. When she first came, she was terrible. She's just behind us. And here she comes. When she first came, you would not want to have her off lead at all. She was extremely deaf, shall we say, to come on. She did her own thing. You would not have wanted to come out with her without her being on a lead and a wiggle. Come on Jess, good girl. Here she comes. Um, she was really, really away with the fairies. She wasn't being disobedient, she just didn't seem to realise that come means come now and not when it's convenient to her. Whereas now, we've got a very different dog. We can come along, we can bring the camera, we can have a chat. And often dogs, when you start to talk, it's like when you pick your mobile phone up and you're in the middle of nowhere. As soon as you're on the phone and the dog knows you're distracted, they immediately start to misbehave or wander off or lose focus. Um, so at certain stages of the training, that side of us, there we go, at certain stages of the training, um, you've got to be aware that if you start to use a camera, then you're going to have a situation where the dog might switch off. Jess, come! Here she comes. You've got to have that situation where she listens and understands. And she knows what's what. Jess! Jess, come! having a, a sniff, she's joining us. There we go, good girl. Okay, so you've got to have the confidence to let her off the lead because obviously in these open areas where there's no gates, you're going to have a situation where they're going to literally disappear if you haven't got control. But now I'm quite comfortable to let her off the lead and have her take no notice. We're on a farm track, she's quite aware what's going on. Just come. Good girl. And sit. Just free. Good girl. Okay, so we've got this easy situation now where we can take her out. She's very attentive. We've got a great rapport going and we really can just let her off, let her have a wander around. I've had her out with um, the dog that she came in for training with, her partner in crime as we say, a dog called Bear. Um, it makes no difference whether she's on her own or in company. Her recall now is very, very good. We can get her to come back whenever, whenever we want, but at the same time, we can just literally let her do her own thing, which is nice. The trickier part is obviously when the owner comes to collect the dog to be able to get the owner to have that respect. Once we've taken away the challenge, shall we say, where the dog feels that they can just do what they want when they want, it's then down to assisting the owner in getting the dog's attention and getting the dog's focus. 90% um, of people report back that the dog's on track, no problems whatsoever, the dog's listening, everything's all sorted. If the dog is a really, really bright dog, and if the dog learns that the owner is not necessarily um, being strict enough, then you can have a situation... <whistles> Jess, come on, good go. You can have a situation where the dog will test the boundaries, as we say. Um, but. Here she is out for a nice walk. Just trotting along at the side of me. And what's also important, I feel, to point out is she's not looking nervous or worried. You know, when I shout her or raise my voice to her, if she's not doing as she's told straight away, we're not seeing a dog that looks like it's had some harsh treatment. Jess! Jess, this way. 
now she's on the trail of a rabbit. So here's a little test. Jess! Jess, come! Good girl. Okay, so again, again we want her to, to focus when she's distracted by something. Jess, this way. We don't have a situation where we've got months and months and months with the dogs, so we have to work quickly to get a response. There's going to be times when the dog's distracted, and then we just have to make sure that we keep the training going, keep the insistence that she comes back and she listens. There we go. Come on, Jess. Good girl. Okay, so we give her a little command, and she's on past us. And as you can see, she's just trotting along at the side of us. We can turn backwards and forwards as many times as we like, and I'm purposely doing that because I don't necessarily want her to just follow along on the same track. I want to tempt her by changing direction, moving around, and having, having her respond when we ask her to go the opposite way. So I'm purposely going to stop in a minute, call her this way, and then obviously we go back the other way, and then we just test that she's responsive. Okay, here we go. <whistles> Just come. Good girl. Okay, so we're going back the other way, and there's Jess coming by us. So we're at that point now where we've got the respect, we can give the command. The next video that I'll be doing will be on the lead in a country park where there's other distractions and she's also seen to be respectful. She does sometimes bark at other dogs if she doesn't like the look of them or they seem to be um, aggressive in any way. She's concerned that they might be thinking of coming over to attack her. So obviously we want to be able to just stop that and once you take that pack leader role you can very quickly just turn around and say be quiet or ah, ah, and very quickly you've got the response from the dog. There we go, there's Jess having a little sniff. <laughs> 